Family Theater presents Kathleen Crowley and Lyle Betker. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ladies' Man, starring Lyle Betker. And now, here is your hostess, Kathleen Crowley. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if, if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Ladies' Man, starring Lyle Betker as Jim. Joanne, finish your milk. I am. Daddy, how do you spell between? Hmm? Sandy, I've told you no homework at the breakfast table. But we've got a test. I don't care what you've got. Put that book away and eat your cereal. Is it with an I? With an I? You'll never get to high school. B-E-T-W-E-E-N. Now eat your breakfast. That's what I thought. What you thought. <laughs> Isn't that radical? Joanne, finish your milk. It's almost 8.20. I am. Miss Smarty Pants. Between with an I. Hmm, really? Both of you eat. Jim, more coffee? Hmm? More coffee? Mm Mm-mm. At least when I get to high school, I'll know how to do the flea hop. The flea hop? Isn't that radical? Girls! All right, who did it? What? Page three of the sports section. Tore out part of the bottom. Oh, Oh, Jim. It wasn't me, Daddy. Well, who was it? The Rams are going into the fourth quarter, and bang, no paper. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you. Joanne, no tears. (laughs) I didn't know you wanted it. Didn't know I wanted it. It's only been in the house for a half an hour. Jim, control yourself. I said I was sorry. It's only a newspaper. So what's the rush to turn it into confetti? I wouldn't do a thing like that. (laughs) You eat your cereal. I just wanted an ad out of the bag. Oh, holy cats. Jim, you watched the game last night on television. And now I want to read about it in the paper. Is that unreasonable? I pay to have this paper delivered. (laughs) Joanne, give your father the ad so he can find out what happened to the Rams. I know what happened to the Rams. They won. You go brush your teeth. Well, they did. That's not the point. The point is I like the paper all in one piece. Here, Daddy. Oh, great. Look. Fold it up like a secret message. I'm sorry. (sighs) An ad. For what? Just a skirt. A skirt? That's what we need around here. Another skirt. Get your coat on, Joanne. It's almost 8.30. All right. I'm very sorry, Daddy. Don't be sorry. Just leave the paper alone in the morning. Jim. Hmm? I... I know you want to read, but, uh, about the skirt. All right. What about the skirt? Well, it, it's the one I told Joanne she could have for the trip to Mexico. Uh, Ellen, look, I was... But, but she's been saving her own money, Jim. It's only six fifty. No, I don't mean that. I, I mean Mexico. I, I think we ought to talk it over a little more. Well, I've got the budget just about worked out. If we stay at motels for two nights going and coming, and it's then... It's not only the budget, honey. I was... Howard says you mustn't drink any water in Mexico. Let's see your teeth. Who's Howard? A boy in my class. Wider. And you're not supposed to drink any milk either, unless it's boiled. Oh, that'll break my heart. We'll boil it. Howard oh. says you shouldn't have anything but wine unless you live there, especially fresh vegetables. <laughs> I'm sure Howard's a great wine drinker. Can I have the front seat going down? Now, will you wait a minute? This isn't even settled. You had the front seat to Arrowhead. I did not. Girls. I fell asleep and you squeezed in next to me. So this time you can sleep in the bath. Now listen to me a minute. Jim. This isn't even settled. Everybody's got their bags packed and we're out on the road and it isn't even settled yet. 
But you said last summer when we went to Arrowhead... I know what I said last summer, but now it's this winter. But you've still got another week coming on your vacation. I know what I've got coming, but I don't know if I can afford a big pilgrimage to Mexico, that's all. I just don't want to plan myself into the poorhouse. Well, I, I told you I've worked out the budget. I know about the budget! Jim! Everything is the budget. Well, we, we're just trying to help you plan. Oh, don't I know it. I get a vacation, and I've got plans to burn. Go here, go there. This is my vacation. We'll talk about it tonight. Whatever you say, Jim. Gosh, getting so you can't even breathe around here. Look at my eggs. Jim? Yeah? What's wrong? Oh, I don't know. Hard day, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tired. Yeah, you looked tired when you checked in this morning. That's possible. Anything wrong at home? No. Well, yes, but it's not just home. It's, well, it's a combination of things. I don't know. Maybe I got the wrong job. How do you mean? Well, look... Do you know that outside of you, I see nothing but women? <laughs> no, it's not funny. I don't. I've got a job repairing refrigerators. Who's the only one at home? The wife. I don't hear a man's voice all day. Jim, I've told you, any time you want, I can transfer you from service to sales. Oh, thanks. I'd starve to death. I couldn't sell cold beer at a picnic. <laughs> Have you told Ellen about the fishing trip? Uh, no. Well, you better get on your horse. Okay. Look, you don't know my sister. I married your sister. This is going to be a bomb. Jim, we leave Monday. You've got to tell her. Dan, can I do this my way? Can I just once do one thing my way? Okay, but do it. I've already told Jean you're going with me. Oh, no. Well, I had to. I said I'm going fishing. With whom? A guy. <sighs> I have to name the guy. When did you tell her? This morning at breakfast. <sighs> Everything happens at breakfast. Well, what was I going to say? Brother, I wanted to do this myself. You know she called Ellen already and told her. All right, suppose she did. Now Ellen knows about it. Half the battle's over with. It's the other half I'm worried about. Look, Jim, you've got to learn to speak up. Dan, have you ever tried speaking up with three women in the house? Even so... I'm surrounded. On the job, at home. You can't fight with women. They cry. So let them cry. Oh, a big hero you are with two bouncing baby boys. Yeah, they're 12 and 10, and they cry all the time. Yeah, you can hit them on the head. It's different. I raise my voice, and the place gets irrigated. <laughs> yeah, that's women. That's right. So don't tell me how I should speak up. Well, you got to say something. Sure. They're packed for Mexico, and I want to go fishing. What do I say? Lay it on the line. I'm going fishing. girls home? The girls are home, upstairs, and crying. Oh, for Pete's sake. You just go fishing. You do that. Okay, okay. It's your vacation. That's what it is. But you could have told us. Oh, you're a very funny girl. You could have told us. When? Between what Howard says in the budget, or while I'm looking for the rest of the sports section? Dinner's ready. I was going to tell you tonight. You didn't have to. Jean called. Mm. I just want to go fishing. That's not a very big thing. Just fishing. It's your vacation. A house full of women. Boy. It's not a house full of women. It, it's your wife and two daughters. But you can go fishing. I told the girls we'd go to Mexico next summer, a winter or... Oh, whenever you want. Honey, I've got to get away for a while. All right. We had a week last summer in Arrowhead. Sandy, Joanne, dinner's ready. I don't even go bowling. I can't afford it. You don't like bowling. Want some help with that? 
You can cut the meat. I don't know. Why does this have to be such a big thing? A million guys go fishing. I'll hold the platter. Sandy still like the fat? Mm-hmm. Hi, kids. Hello, Daddy. Have a big day? Pretty big. Want me to put on the cream and sugar, Mommy? Yes, thanks, dear. Knives and forks on. Everything's on. Daddy? Yeah? Will you bring home some fish? You get in first, I'll hand you the bait box. Okay. There you go. Got it. Hold it steady a minute. Yep. Yeah. Okay, push off a little. Do you want to try the cove again? Well, I, I don't know. We didn't have much luck there yesterday. Well, that's supposed to be the best place around here this time of year. <laughs> that doesn't say much for this time of year. Look, Jim, you wanted to go fishing, you're fishing. What's eating you now? Nothing's eating me. Are you still feeling guilty about leaving Ellen and the girls home? Huh. Why do they make you feel like such a heel? What do you mean? They were smiling and waving when we drove off yesterday. That's my point. So now I'm a heel. <laughs> if they'd been crying, you'd feel better? Of course not. Well, then what? Well, it's... It's a very subtle thing. Only women know how to do it. Do what? Well, make you feel guilty whether they smile or cry about something. Yeah, that's subtle, all right. No, oh, I've made a study of it. Look, if you do something that disappoints a woman and she smiles bravely about it and doesn't say anything, you feel like a rat because she's being a good sport, right? All right. But if you do the same thing and she cries about it, just as you're starting to feel she's unreasonable and you're not really to blame after all, you realize she wouldn't be crying if you hadn't upset her in the first place. So you're a rat anyhow. Either way, they got you. That's fascinating. Oh, man, you get three women together like I have and they can do amazing things. Two will cry while one is smiling. And then right before your eyes, they'll switch around. It's like an opera. Jim, since we came down to Balboa to fish... Uh, yeah, okay, okay. You mind if I start the motor? No, no, go ahead. But Dan, it's amazing though, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Give it just a little more line. I am, I am. Oh, I'd just like to get a look at this thing. Darn fog. All right, now take up the slack. Slowly. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah, oh, if I could just get it in close to the boat. Got the net right here. Yeah. Well. Oh, Peachy. Is it gone? Gone. Two strikes, two outs. Any idea what it was? For all I know, it could have been a mermaid. You can't see ten feet from the... Say, uh... Dan, hmm. which way is the shore? About a hundred yards that way. They can tell the way the fog's moving. Yeah. Maybe we'd better call it a day. Good enough. You want to take any anchor? Yeah. Starting to cool off, huh? Yeah, but good. Y'all set? Right. I'll take her in slow. As soon as we see the shoreline, all we gotta do is follow it south to the pier. Can't be more than half a mile. Let's face it, Dan. We've gone a lot farther than a hundred yards. Yeah, I know. And now I'm not so sure which way the fog is moving. Yeah. And there's a little wind coming up. Yeah. Usually blowing in from offshore, but you can't always tell. Hmm. I don't suppose you'd have a compass. No, no. I would if I hadn't taken out of the tackle box and given it to Jerry. Gee, I never used it anyhow. What did Jerry want with it? I don't know. He's king of the wild frontier or something. <laughs> Listen, what do you say we shut off the motor and see if the tide takes us anywhere? Yeah, it can't do any harm. Oh, man. That's a wind, all right. Yeah, it is. 
How do you think we're fixed for gas? Well, we got enough to take us where we want to go if we can figure out which way that is. But not to Japan, huh? No, no, not quite. What time you got? Uh, 25. I thought maybe the fog was getting a little heavier. No. It's starting to get dark. Keep her in the wind, Dan. I'm trying to. These waves are getting worse. You want me to take it for a while? No, no, we better not move around. Wouldn't you think that clown we rented the boat from would have reported us missing by now? Yeah, you'd think so. We only signed out till six o'clock. Can you see your watch? Are you kidding? I can't even see you. Oh, brother. Running out of gas? Yeah, it could be. You think we ought to dump that thing out if it conks out on us? No, no, no. We can use the ballast. Here, I'll, I'll get, get on the oars. Keep her into the wind as long as you can. Well, that's not going to be long. Uh, there she goes. That's the ball game. Here, grab an oar. we got to keep her swung around. Easy. Easy. Right, squeeze over, will you? Yeah. There, you got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Pull. Pull. A little more on your side. We're swinging around. Ease it up. Okay. All right. All together now. Brother. Jim, I don't know. You praying? I'm praying. Oh, my gosh. What? The oar came out of the lock. Hang on to it. We're coming around. Now, ease off. I am. Look, we're going to be swamped. We're in a trough. Jump clear, Dan. We can hang on to the water. I can't get my balance. Jump clear. Dan. Dan, where are you? Dan. I've got you, Dan. Dan, you okay? Yeah. My head. I hit my head. Yeah, hang on, we're okay. Yeah. Both just turned over, but it's, it's still afloat. All we gotta do is hang on. My head. <laughs> I can't see anything. Dan, you can't pass out. I can't see. Dan! <sighs> out like a light. Oh. I must weigh a thousand pounds. Dan. Oh, brother. Who's gonna find us out here? Out here? <laughs> Where's that? Dan. Gotta hang on to the boat. Help! Help! Oh, I wish I was in Mexico. I wish I was in Mexico with my three women in Mexico. My three skirts. It's a skirt I told Joanne she could have for the trip to Mexico. Buy out the whole store, baby. It's only six fifty. Buy out the whole store. She's been saving her own money. Dan, Dan, can you hear that? I got three women who do nothing but save money. Dan! Help! Thirsty. All this water, I'm thirsty. Hard says you mustn't drink any water in Mexico. I won't. I won't drink it, I promise. Howard says you shouldn't have anything but wine unless you live there. I'd be glad to live there, Sandy. Living in Mexico beats dying in the Pacific. Take it from your old dad. A week in Arrowhead. A week with Davy Jones. Can I have the front seat going down? Afraid not, honey. I'll be going down all by myself. This is my vacation. Me and Dan. I told you I've worked out the budget. I know about the budget. What do I know about the budget? I give her the money and she works a miracle every seven days. I'm just trying to help you plan. I wish this was the budget, baby. I wish it was. I just wanted to go fishing. That's... that's not a very big thing. You can go fishing. With all this water, I can't tell if you're smiling or crying. It's all the same thing. It's beautiful. I told the girls we'd go to Mexico next summer, or winter, or whenever you want. Now, you just pick me up and we'll all go right now, honey. 
straight to Mexico. You just picked me up. Helen, you're picking me up. It's... It's a boat. Dan, Dan. Jim, yeah, my head. Dan, listen. It's a launch or something. Launch? Yeah, can you hear it? It's a boat. They must be looking for us. Help! Jim, I, I hear it. Look. Look at light. Searchlight. Help! Over here! Jim, over here! It's, it's a light, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, over here. They see us, Jim. But they do. Hey, you're over here. How is he, Doctor? Just fine. All he needs is a good night's sleep. I think you ought to keep him here then, huh? For the night, anyway. I've given him a sedative. That bump he got on the head. Just a superficial bruise. X-ray didn't show anything. Oh, that's great. I was thinking uh, you might want to notify your families personally uh, that you're all right. <laughs> I just tried to call from downstairs. Busy. Oh, it figures. Huh? <laughs> I've got three women in the house. <laughs> no, don't misunderstand. They're great. Confusing, but great. Well, they've probably heard about you on the radio anyhow. The radio? You're a hero. Oh. Hanging on to your brother-in-law after he passed out. He wouldn't be here if you hadn't. Listen, I had to hang on to something. That's not how the Coast Guard tells it. Well, if I'm a hero, maybe I ought to get a hero's welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, I've been trying to phone your brother-in-law's house, but no answer. You want me to keep at it? I guess the news would sound a little better coming from you. If you're in a hurry to go ahead, I could have his wife phone your place as soon as I talk to her. Say you're on the way. Would you do that, Doc? Be glad to. I want to get home. Jim! Hi. Jim. Hi, honey. Girls, Daddy's home. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Did you bring me anything? Oh, what a question. He brought himself. That's the big thing. Hey, give us a kiss, girls. Mm. <laughs> Is Dan with you? No, no, he was pretty tired. Didn't you even bring any fish? Fish? Really? Isn't that <laughs> radical? <laughs> Have you had anything to eat? No, and I'm starved, too. Come on out in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll get it. You will not. You've been on the phone half the night. You and Joanne take Daddy out in the kitchen. I'll be right along, dear. Daddy? Yeah? Why did you come home so soon? Why did I what? Hello? Couldn't you catch any fish? Yes, Jean. Well, didn't... didn't Mommy tell you? Tell us what? Oh, she told us you were the best daddy in the world, and if you wanted to go fishing, you should. Jean, what are you talking about? Uh, honey, let me speak to her. But she, she said something about the boat turning over and Dan being in the hospital. That's right. I, I thought you knew about it. But Jim! Hello, Jean. Yeah, now, 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 wait a minute. Now, take it easy. Dan's just fine. When I left him, he was sleeping like a baby. He got a little bump on the head, but he's fine. Hmm? The doctor said, what? <laughs> no, that's silly. I, I didn't save his life. I. Well, the, the boat got turned over by a wave, and we just hung on together, that's all. Sure, I'll drive you down first thing in the morning. Jeannie, now look, he's as sound as a dollar. All he got was a soaking. Now, will you stop worrying and get some sleep? I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. You bet. Good night. Jim, what happened? Well, I thought you knew about it. The boat turned over. Well, how would we know about it? In the ocean? It's been on the radio. Jim, Jim, you could have been drowned. No, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. No wonder you didn't bring home any fish. Well, I should have never let you go. I should have put my foot down. It's all right. I'm all right. Look. How did it happen? We lost our bearings in the fog, and, and a wave swamped us. You were in the water out there in the dark? Well, it wasn't for very long. Oh, Daddy! Did any fish come around? Oh, Jim, if, if I'd have known, I, I'd have been a maniac. I thought you did know. You gave me such a big welcome when I came in. That's because we missed you. It gets boring around here. Too many women. <laughs> well, I... Look, on the way home, it occurred to me. I've still got five days left of my vacation, and 
Well, if you still have that budget you worked out for Mexico. Oh, darling, you don't, you don't have to do that. Well, baby, it's nothing to cry about. Well, I, I'm just happy. If we go to Mexico, I get to wear my false fingernails. Oh, oh, I can't go to Mexico. Now, what are you crying about? <laughs> I spent the six dollars I saved for my skirt. And now I haven't anything to wear. Oh, well, honey, <laughs> don't, don't cry. We'll work out something. All right, all the way in the front seat. No fresh vegetables. <laughs> I can't go down there in rags. Oh, honey, Daddy will get you a skirt. <laughs> Isn't he a wonderful Daddy? Mexico, no, Mexico. Wait a now listen, to me. listen, listen, will you? Two crying, one laughing, and in a minute they'll all be switched around. I tell you, it's nothing but an opera. This is Kathleen Crowley again. You know, we all like to feel we can be useful and helpful. And one of the great joys in life is, is knowing that we're useful and helpful in an undertaking that's worthwhile. Well, none of us can be happy if we live only for ourselves, because the joy of living comes from giving. Yes, giving ourselves to something we know is bigger and better, worthier and more enduring than, than we are. That's why the greatest joy in living is giving ourselves to God. When a family joins together to give themselves to God in family prayer, they're united in a joy and happiness that only family prayer can bring. I guess we all know from experience that that's true, that whatever we give to others comes back to us some way or another, and whatever we give to God comes back a hundredfold. So let's give... God, a little time in our homes each day. Let's take a little time out to join together with our family for family prayer. Then we'll really know how true it is that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Ladies' Man, starring Lyle Betger. Kathleen Crowley was your hostess. Others in our cast were Lois Collier, Jill St. John, Gayon Kelly, Herb Ellis, and Bill Irwin. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Restitution, starring Gig Young. Rita Johnson will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.